lovely people, my name is Emma and today I'm going to be talking to you about various paleontology books that I have both read and intend to read. So this is the second one in my like the good, the bad and the TBR kind of series and somebody suggested on the first one which is about medical memoirs that I should do one about dinosaurs and paleontology and that just really resonated today. I'm kind of feeling a bit weird and out of sorts which is why we're on the sofa. I think I might even have like a stomach bug um, but I'm feeling a little queasy so we've got my appropriate I think Diplodocus, Diplodocus mug with some ginger tea and we're just going to talk all books old and prehistoric and paleontological that's not a word and dinosaur related so we're going to jump in with a bunch of books that I think are really good then I'm going to do some that are like eh, they're still worth the read but they're a bit more meh and then I'm going to talk about the excessive dinosaur based and paleontology based TBR that I have some of which I own already and some of which are just on my radar so let's jump in and first of all this book has been mentioned multiple times on this channel but if you only read one book about dinosaurs which why would you read, read more than that but if you were only to read one you should read Rise and Fall of the Dinosaurs by Steve Brissate this is the ultimate like beginner's compendium to dinosaurs it spans the time pre kind of dinosaurs being the the major um sort of species dominant on the planet it goes through all of their like heyday and then the extinction events and it also includes like a history of paleontology in general in it and also some really fun anecdotes from Steve in his time in paleontology and looking at like how advancements in technology have changed how we understand information and kind of the transfer of information within the world of paleontology and science in general. I love this book, I have a whole review on it that I'll link down below, I think it's absolutely phenomenal and this really kicked off and re-sparked my love for dinosaurs, <laughs> um, so it's an amazing place to start and I do think it is like re required reading for anybody who's into paleontology. Once you've read that one, if you want to go more niche and more like intense, one that I would not recommend for beginners but if you're kind of, you're familiar with paleontology in general. Dinosaurs Without Bones by Anthony J. Martin has been one of my favourite reads this year. This is looking at the um, the kind of study of ichnology which is trace fossils so not specifically just the bones but rather the trace evidence that the animals will have left when they were alive. So things like footprints or burrows and also like marks on the bone so sort of um, wounds and, and nicks and things like that and it's what can we understand about dinosaurs and how they lived based on the evidence that left over within the trace fossils. Like I said, kind of, it isn't really a beginner friendly book. You do need to have a semi decent background knowledge because there is a lot more technical information in this. But in a similar way to the Rise and Fall of the Dinosaurs, um, Ashley J. Martin does really lovely um, kind of interweaves stories of his time out in the field and sort of anecdotes of the various paleontology pa paleontologists that he's met and that he's worked with over the years um, and kind of some of the major discoveries so it does act as a little bit of a snapshot window into the life of a paleontologist as well as covering the information really really incredible and there's another one of his books that is on my tbr list that i'll mention a bit later but i think that this is an excellent read broadening outside of strictly just dinosaurs if you want to talk kind of history of life on the planet paleontology in general then a great place to start is The Ends of the World by Peter Brannan. This covers the five major extinction events that the planet Earth has gone through since it's kind of early life has started to inform basically since there have been things that can go extinct um, and this is a really good way of getting a sweeping look at life on on the planet because to discuss how the extinction event occurred we need to discuss what things were like on the planet at the same time and this has really opened up a door for me into a like whole much broader world outside of just dinosaurs because don't get me wrong dinosaurs are really fucking cool i do love them a lot but actually prehistoric life is also really cool and i think that this is a great way of jumping in and kind of finding out more about things like trilobites and like the cambrian period and sort of the kind of snowball earth and all sorts of really really exciting things um, and Peter Brandon has a really wonderful writing style so I would really really heavily recommend this. This has been another fantastic read this year. If we are talking kind of um, history of paleontology more specifically a lovely one that is about um, Victorian history is The Fossil Hunter by Shelley Emling. It's a biography of Mary Anning who was um, one of the early fossil hunters and in the Victorian era or like just pre-Victorian and kind of through part of Victoria's reign I believe and she 
she found some of the very earliest examples of um, plesiosaur fossils which were the like aquatic creatures that were around in the time of the dinosaurs down in Lyme Regis which is a really big hub um, for fossil hunting in the UK for things that were around the time of the dinosaurs but not technically dinosaurs based on like scientific classifications. Um, it's really lovely like Mary Anning has kind of been overlooked in history quite a lot so this book it does a wonderful job of shining a spotlight on her life but also is really good at acknowledging where we don't actually have um, direct information about her and instead we kind of have to infer based on how other people would feel and it's a lovely way of jumping into sort of how did the field of paleontology get started, what was really going on in science at the time and how did discoveries of these fossils really shake the foundations of the combination of science and Christianity. So it's a really 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 wonderful book. If you want to go slightly earlier than dinosaurs and start to drift more towards like prehistoric man. Uh, Tamed by Alice Roberts is a wonderful wonderful book that talks about the 10 different species that human beings have either domesticated or cultivated in some way shape or form. I'm not going to go into too much detail here, I have a review down below but let's just say it's an amazing book. It is drifting outside of like strictly paleontology but if you do like your prehistory this is a good way of inching back so I would say totally check it out but I won't go into too much detail because I have so many books to talk about today. So those are my like absolute greatest hits of kind of books to do with paleontology and now I'm going to talk about three that I enjoyed but I had something, there was something about them that didn't quite resonate. So the first of those I read semi-recently and that's Europe by Tim Flannery and this is the first hundred million years of Europe as like a continent so it's looking at towards the end of the era of the dinosaurs and then it does drift more towards getting into like the prehistoric humanoid sort of range so it's kind of spanning straddling that sort of transitionary period between. Um, it is focused on Europe. The actual information in it is really really interesting and I deeply enjoyed everything that I learned about kind of how the continent formed and what what was happening on it but I just didn't jive with um, Tim Flannery's writing style. I found him um, quite intrusive in places, uh, his humour very dark and a bit crass and not really my cup of tea and he also had this weird tendency of like trying to pit the various different sciences and the various different time periods like against each other which I just it, it's something as a rhetoric that I don't personally enjoy. I think that knowledge for knowledge's sake is fascinating and you don't need to justify why you think one particular time period or one particular continent would be more interesting than the other so him as a writer I don't actually like but the content in this is fantastic and it is really really interesting and from it I learned about some uh, uh, pterosaurs so like pterodactyl type creatures that were the size of giraffes called like Hapsic or Quetzalcoatlica, terrifying creatures, really really cool. So I did enjoy it for the information side of things. One that's more like, it's a kind of cute introduction but it's a little bit brief, is Why Dinosaurs Matter by Ken Kenneth Lacavara. Uh, Kenneth Lacavara is a really big paleontologist, his Twitter feed is fantastic so follow him on there. This was a TED talk um, I think or is at least from the TED range and it's kind of a series of mini essays talking about the importance of studying prehistoric and pa pa and like paleontology in general and why it is important looking at our future and a lot of the kind of work here will connect up with climate change um, and things like that as well and sort of the science that we understand about our environment and sort of deep time so he is doing a lot of work in that area but it is a little bit brief so maybe a good way to kind of get started with paleontology but I think once you've read a title or two this will seem a little bit basic in comparison and then one that is sort of crossing over into the world of true crime is The Dinosaur Artist by Paige Williams. This is about a guy who actually essentially stole the um, skeleton of a T batar which is the Tyrannosaurus batar. It's a um, kind of subspecies related to the Tyrannosaurus rex um, and he stole it from Mongolia and then sold it essentially on the black market and it is about the story of that crime but also um, kind of the history of uh, fossil hunting in general and like how do um, either a mixture of amateur or professional fossil hunters who are not strictly speaking paleontologists but more like just kind of enthusiasts, how do they um, interact with the more formal university based paleon paleontology departments out there, this particular crime and then sort of loose discussions around like who owns various scientific discoveries. It also talks about Mongolia and what was happening because that's where he stole the skeleton from and like what was happening in Mongolia at the time of the dinosaurs and like why is Mongolia so important for um, paleontology. 
it's a bit mishmashy and a bit all over the place which is why it's um like i enjoyed it but it's not like one of my top books on this but i do think again if you're like more new to paleontology this one could be interesting because it does bring it into more of a modern day context of like how do other people interact with it outside of like university departments and sort of the nitty-gritty of how does it actually work um but the it, it, it is it is a bit all over the place so those are some of the books that i've read recently um, and now we're going to move on to my tbr i'm not going to have all of the author's names i'm so sorry i didn't write them down so one is american dinosaur abroad and this is about the uh diplodocus skeleton dippy who um was discovered a very long time ago now i think but basically they made plaster casts of dippy so that dippy could be in museums all across europe and the world i believe there was like they were in a bunch of different European countries and a couple in like North America and then something happened to Dippy I think I don't I can't remember if the original skeleton got destroyed or if there was like a an issue with copyright or something like that but basically Dippy became quite controversial so this is the story of Dippy the Diplodocus its discovery its sort of place within um kind of the public eye and things like that I think it will be really really interesting to find out about um, I think I saw Dippy at the Natural History Museum. I believe Dippy used to be there, or at least a plaster cast, and now they have the giant whale instead. Um, but yeah, so that I think will be really interesting. Okay, then we have Tyrannosaurus Sue, the extraordinary saga of the largest, most fought over T-Rex ever found. And this is a particular T-Rex skeleton that was found in America that was like the most complete T-Rex skeleton we've ever had. And it was about the various um, sort of battles about trying to claim her skeleton um and I, the, both this one and dinosaur um like american dinosaur abroad i think are going to expand on what paige williams was talking about in the dinosaur artist about like who owns what discoveries like um sort of how do we interact with fossils being in the public domain and sort of access to them and like should we be able to like should they be able to be auctioned off by private like privately and things like that um and yeah just generally i think it's going to be really really interesting to see um sort of that discussion unfold a bit more because like i said Paige williams only really briefly touched on it so i do want to read more books around that so then i have the dragon seekers how an extraordinary circle of fossilists discovered the dinosaurs and paved the way for darwin and this is going to be about like the super super early discoveries that were made um it includes Mary Anning, excellent. I was about to say it better include her. Um, and Richard Owen as well, who was um, like a close friend of Mary Anning, I believe. Um, and Thomas Hawkins as well. Richard Owen, I think, might even be the guy who coined the term dinosaur, which is really cool. So that's going to be talking about like early um, discoveries and like how they changed how people interacted with science. And, like, I, and, you know, it does pave the way for Darwin and evolution. And it's so fascinating to think about the, all these things that we kind of take for granted in science now, but to think that these ideas are not actually that old in the grand scheme of like human thought. Um, it's just really, really fascinating. Cool. I like, I love history of ideas, and I think paleontology bumps into history of ideas in a really, really interesting way. Then we have Big Bone Lick, the cradle of American paleontology, and this is about a particular area of America um, where you got lots of really, like, lo lots and lots and lots of fossils. I think this one is less about dinosaurs or more about um, like early humans and sort of talking about some of the megafauna that used to be around before we kind of basically killed it all um i think it's more to do with bisons and things like that um so yeah i think it's gonna be really interesting i'm i'm slight i i like niche stuff with this kind of topic now so i think it's gonna be very cool the next one i have is dinosaurs rediscovered which is supposed to be the best and most up-to-date general look at dinosaurs at the moment it's by michael Benton I believe and I was after finishing the Dinosaurs Without Bones I um, actually messaged Anthony Martin on Twitter being like where should I go next and uh, he recommended this book as being really really cutting edge for um, some of the most interesting theories out there about dinosaurs because obviously it's something which is continually evolving. Then we have Out of Thin Air which is a book that is looking at the extinction event and kind of the migration from dinosaurs to birds and kind of how we believe that that happened. I think it's quite an old book now it might have been out in around like 2006 so I don't know how up to date it's going to be in terms of like new ideas but it does look interesting and basically I'm going to read anything about dinosaurs at this rate. So then we have the Tyrannosaurus Chronicles which is looking at Tyrannosaurus as a subspecies of which there are quite a few different variations and like how did they become such the apex predators 
apex predators that they were but then also how have they really like captured the kind of public imagination obviously with things like jurassic park the t-rex really is a big it's basically the big bad we're going to ignore the indominus rex because that doesn't actually exist um t-rex is where it's at so it's kind of like how did that happen so it's kind of a, a nice mixture of paleontology and then like pop cultural references uh, then we have the evolution underground which is the other book by um anthony j martin that i'm really interested in that's the guy who did dinosaur without bones and this one's gonna be looking at burrowing dinosaurs which is very very cool then there's one which is my beloved brontosaurus which looked like it was actually more of a kind of um casual enthusiast memoir i'm not too sure how good that's going to be from a writing standpoint but it's about his interactions with fossil hunting and specifically the dinosaur brontosaurus then there's all yesterdays which is um more like a big glossy coffee table art book which is a bunch of paleo art trying to paint dinosaurs in sort of uh, a variety of different positions that we don't necessarily normally see them in um, which i think would be really really cool and kind of looking at how we can use information from fossils to try and create more accurate paleo art and how does paleo art even like work um which is really interesting and then the last like official one that is sort of about dinosaurs is dragon's teeth and this is actually about uh the hunt for so it's not just called dragon's teeth it's something else it'll be here but it's like what did people think that fossils were before we kind of had enough science to understand what they actually were um and there's all sorts of like folklore and mythology wrapped around um dinosaur skeletons which is really cool so it's gonna be looking at some of that and there is a book as well i will try and find i can't remember the title of it but i'll try and link it down below which is basically it's like the paleo art book that I was talking about all yesterday's, but it's redrawing um, current animals with the kind of habits that paleo artists often apply to uh, dinosaur skeletons. So there's a tendency to make um, all sorts of drawings of dinosaurs a lot leaner and a lot scarier with like much bigger fangs than they actually necessarily potentially would have had. And so it's looking at um, like the skeletons of Bondi animals and sort of re sort of trying to imagine what people would have thought that they would look like if we didn't know what the living specimens look like and how do we interpret that so i think that's gonna be really interesting i can't remember the title of it if i find it i'll link it down below and if i can't find it and you know what the hell book i'm on about please let me know um but yeah so like this has now become way longer than i intended and i'm sort of like slouching on my sofa and chilling but these are all the dinosaur books that i'm super excited to try and get to next obviously i want to read the ones on my shelf and i think my next big priority one is dinosaurs rediscovered because it is supposed to be like the best book out there at the moment about them um also i'm aware that there is a bit of a bias towards male writers in this so if you know of any really cool um women authors who are doing work in paleontology uh do let me know i'm going to try and make a bit more of a conscious effort to try and find some who have got some kind of pop sciencey stuff out there um so yeah so that's it from me i actually have to go because i'm now running late for a zoom hangout so uh today's been a bit weird let's just put it that way but do let me know if you are keen on paleontology if you've read any other books that you think i'd like if you have read any of the ones that are on my general tbr and what would you like the next video in this series for the good the bad and the tbr to be and i humbly apologize for how long rambling this video has got have a wonderful reading week and i'll chat to you soon bye